Hey there, welcome back to Coding at Home with the Code Hub. Um, we missed a day, we missed a couple hours, but we're back and we're going to talk some more about logical operators. Um, I, this was all a big plan. It was to get you to think a little bit more about uh, what logical operators are, how you could use them in your daily life, and um, really let it sink in. So today we're going to walk through a few concepts. I'm going to try to bring it home with a, an illustration of exactly how logical operators work uh, and what decisions are being made, um, both by, by byte when we're running the puzzle and then by, by you and, and determining how you're gonna solve a, a puzzle and how you can use logical operators to, to solve those puzzles. So we're gonna work through that first with an example uh, and then we're gonna go back to the playgrounds and, and work through some of those examples that we had um, in Wednesday session. Next week, we're going to do a, a debugging session with one of our, our coders here in the house. Uh, we're going to walk through some of the code that she wrote and try to figure out all right, where it went wrong, what it did right, what was kind of interesting about it, um, which is always a good exercise to do is to go back over the code you've written and figure out what did you do well, what did you do wrong, how would you do it differently now that you've seen it in action. Um, so we'll we'll walk through some of that stuff. But first, I want to give you a little presentation on making decisions and logical operators kind of in action. So let's go take a look. Okay, so it's called making decisions because that's all we're doing with conditional coding and logical operators is we're just trying to make a decision what code we want to have run, whether it's with byte in the puzzles or whether it's in response to something somebody typed in in our quiz. And we'll hopefully get to that a little bit on Monday as well. We'll work on building up some much more interesting quizzes where we can react to information the user types in. So, so far, we've just been pushing byte forward without too much thought. So off byte goes, just moving forward. Now, when we get to conditional coding, what we do is Byte actually does a little bit of an evaluation of his surroundings before moving on to the, before we actually run any code. So Byte hops onto that first tile and asks himself, hey, is there a gem here? Is there something in my way? And based on the answers to that, in this case, there's no gem, there's nothing in his way, it will, will set certain properties on Byte. And it'll look a little bit like this. So we've used some of those properties like is on gem or is blocked. And each one of those properties is set as a result of the answer to is there a gem or is something in my way. Now, so when our code runs, let's, let's take a look. We're actually going to see the code in action. So we're going to step forward and we're going to ask ourselves, is there a gem? Is there something in my way? So the answer to both of those questions is yes, right? So now when we run our code, we're going to look at is on gem. That's going to be true. So what's going to happen is we're going to run that code inside that first condition. Because remember, when we ask if, and then we give it a condition like is on gem, if it's true, we're gonna run that code. If it's not, then we'll go and look at the others, like else if is blocked, and then we'll ask ourselves, okay, are we blocked? If we are blocked, then we'll run that code. If we're not, we'll look at the next section, which is the else section, and then we'll say, okay, cool. Well, we're in the otherwise case. None of those other things were true, so we'll move forward. So this is all fine. This is what we've done before with conditional coding. We learned about else if. Um, in this case, this code wouldn't work, right? I have a bug because I am blocked and I do want to run some code if I'm blocked. So all I did right now is collect the gem, which is good, but I'm, I'm not going to be able to move forward uh, without turning right. So this is where our and logical operator comes in. So to handle this kind of case, what I could have done is written some code like this and said, okay, cool. I want to check to see if I'm on a gem and if I'm blocked, if both of those are true, then I'll run that code in the first block. So collect gem and turn right. 
Otherwise, I'll just move forward. So let's see what that looks like. So there we go, we have a check. Oh, is on gem is true. That's looking good. Is blocked is true. So we'll execute this code here. So byte collects the gem and byte sort of turns right. Now, that same code where I check to see if I'm on a gem and if I'm blocked is not going to work in other cases, though. So in this case, I'm not blocked, but I do happen to be on a gem. So let's see what happens with with our condition here where we have our, our and operator that's telling us that we need both of those to be satisfied is on gem and is blocked. All right, so we take a look at that first line, that first condition. OK, is on gem is true. And is blocked is false because there's nothing in front of me. There's nothing in my way. So we hop down to the, the else clause of our condition. So we don't wind up collecting the gem. So there's a bug in our code here. So we used a, an and logical operator, but our code still isn't, isn't quite right in this case. We have to, we'd have to change our code. Maybe it's not the right tool for the job. Now, something that might be the right tool for a job, well, in this case in particular, we had this example in, in the book. Um, they had a, a conditional where they said, okay, if I'm on a close switch or if I'm on a gem, uh, Byte should dance because that's a situation we want to be in. We want to be able to toggle that switch on and we want to be able to collect that gem. So that's a good scenario. So we'll, we'll dance for it. So what we do, we use these two pipes that we can see underneath making decisions to build our logical or operator is what we call this. So let's have a check again. So we're going to check and we'll say, all right, so if we're on a gem, okay, cool. Well, that's true. So immediately, even without checking if I'm on a close switch, I know that I'm going to run the code inside this conditional, but we'll check it anyway. So that's false. But because is on gem is true, I run the dance code and you can see byte jiggle a little bit. And then we move forward. So now we're going to have another check. We're going to run that same conditional. Imagine we're in a loop here. We'll hop back up. This time is on gem is false and is on close switch is false. So we have no true statements. So what do you think is going to happen now? Well, we're going to move forward because both of those are false. So there's no, we're not going to run our dance code because none of them satisfy that true condition that we're looking for. So we're going to move forward and we'll check it one last time. Is on gem is false. Is on close switch is true. So we're going to dance. And if we happen to be on a tile that had both a close switch and a gem, what do you think would happen? So both of those were true. Well, since they're both true, we would dance. It's only when both are false that we're not going to execute that code. Now, one of the most difficult things about using these operators is finding them on the keyboard. So when you bring up the iPad keyboard, this is where they are. The logical or operator, that pipe, is over the A, so if you tap on the A and drag down, you'll get one of the pipes, and you need two of them for your OR operator. And then the ampersand is over the S. So you do the same thing, you tap on the S and drag down, and you'd need two of those for each of these, for the OR and for the AND operator. Okay, so the last one we cover in this logical operators chapter is the not operator. So this is a little bit different. Instead of joining two different conditions, this is just flipping one condition on its head. And so we'll see, we'll take a look at what that means. All right, so we have our, our code here is written. It says, if not is on gem, then we'll move forward. Otherwise, we'll collect the gem. 
That's how I'd read it if I were kind of scanning through this code, reviewing it with, with some developer. So we'll evaluate that condition. Okay, cool. So we look at that first line. So the first thing we do is we look and we say, okay, are we on a gem? Well, no, we're not. So that's false. But then when we use that not operator, it flips it to true. And it's, it doesn't mean that suddenly there's a gem on that tile. It just means that in my code, I'm now going to run the stuff in that first block of my if condition. Like this. I'm now going to move forward. Because I'm saying if I'm not on a gem, that's true. So I want to run, I want to run the code in my first block of code. So we're going to do another check. Actually, we haven't written those. But so when we land on the on the gem, is on gem will be true. And when we flip that, it'll be flipped to false. So we'll wind up falling into our otherwise block, our else block, and we'll collect that gem. Hopefully this makes it a little bit more clear and you can kind of feel it because we try to step through the code. And what we'll do is we'll post these slides and these transitions and everything so you can play it over after the, the session today. So that's our, that's, so those are our logical operators that we're working with. So let's go back to, let's go over to the, the code and we'll open up playgrounds and we'll practice this a little bit ourselves. So at the end of last session, we got into checking this or that. But before we go into checking this or that, let's, let's go back just quickly. So I tapped on the, the title. I'm going to go back to checking this and that and see if it makes any more sense now. Okay, so now we have this condition is blocked left because that's going to help us solve this puzzle. No, we'll wait for it to load. All right, here we go. Okay, so you remember, if we look at this puzzle, we'll walk through the same thing that we were walking through before. So the code in the, the presentation that we just ran through, it, it was kind of running in a for loop. We just didn't include that in the sample code. We kept running through the code and we would stop here and say, okay, well, are we on a gem? Are we blocked left? Okay, well, if in this case, because it's an and operator, they both need to be true, right? And then we go, to, you know, if, if one of those is false, then we drop down here and then we check this condition. We say, okay, well, I'll say if, if we're on a gem, then we'll collect the gem. Okay, cool. Well, if none of those are true, we'll just drop out of that condition and then go back up to the top and move forward again. So let's see. So this, this code, when we ran it, we managed this collected everything. Because I think what we were missing at first was we didn't have this last piece here where we were checking for if we're just on a gem. Right, but the interesting piece is this is on gem and is blocked left. Because what we do is on each of these steps, we look here and we say, all right, cool. Well, on this tile, am I blocked left? Yes, that's true. But am I on a gem? No, I'm not on a gem. This one here. It, I am, I'm on a gem, so that's true. And I am blocked left. So that's why I kick off on this whole path, this turn right, move forward, toggle switch, turn left, turn left, move forward again, and then turn right. Let's try stepping through this just to see this in action, just like we saw it in action in the playground, in the um, the demo just, just before this. So let's step through my code. There it goes. Hopper moves forward. We check to see if we're on a gem and is blocked left. Now we dropped into this else if is on gem and we collected the gem. So we're checking again. Okay, so we weren't blocked left, so we fell into this section here. Now we fell in here because we're on a gem and we're blocked left, so we got to go down through here.
Now the problem is I left the gem behind. There, I found that I'm blocked left and I'm on a gem. I toggled the switch. So that's all looking good. It's move forward, move forward. I get to the bottom, I turn right, and I'm forgetting to collect the gem. And then up the stairs I go. And you'll notice now when we get to the end of this puzzle, I didn't solve it because I left how many gems behind? One, two, three. And guess where they all are? They're all when I was on a gem and when I was blocked to the left. So Hopper, on each one of these blocks, when they when he stopped there, when she stopped there, I Hopper evaluated, hey, am I blocked left? Am I blocked ahead? Am I on a gem? Am I on a closed switch? Am I on an open switch? And in all of those cases where Hopper was blocked left and was on a gem, we wound up executing this code. Well, in this code, we're not collecting the gem. So maybe what we want to do is before we go up and toggle the switch, we want to collect that gem. So let's, let's do that. Let's add a collect gem step in here. So we tapped at the end of the brace. We'll tap collect gem from our autocomplete bar. Now let's step through our code and let's watch it again. Okay, cool. There goes Hopper collecting gems because we're it's still in this. We haven't gotten into a condition where we're both on a gem and we're blocked to the left. So there's something in our way to the left. Okay, cool. We collected our, our gem and we were blocked left. So this is good. We're looking much better already. Okay, back Hopper goes. Collects the gem because I'm not blocked left. So we just run that one line of code, that collect gem function. Okay. We're looking way better. We've got five or six gems and we've toggled three or four switches. Up we go. We toggle the last switch and we'll get back down because we've got to finish running our code. Turn right, we'll drop out of here and that's the last loop. And we've done it. We've collected all of our gems. Now let's go on to the next one. Let's try doing the or operator. So checking this or that. Because I know in my mind and in other people's minds in the house, this is a more frequently used one, a, a better one to introduce first. So, um, Let's go check out checking this or that. Okay, so this one looks way more difficult. So let's read through the, the instructions. Anytime I get stuck in a puzzle like this where it does look far more difficult than, you know, just move forward and, and turn left and all that kind of stuff. This is okay. We've got to figure out how to get to that, that portal and then get over there and then turn around. We could write this out longhand and it could be kind of tedious, but there's a loop here. So they're sort of giving us a hint that there's an easier way to do it. Now you don't have to start out doing it the easier way. In fact, nine times out of 10, when you're programming, you won't do things the easy way the first time. You'll do it the really long drawn out way, but at least you know exactly what's happening. And it's only later when you look at your code, you'll say, oh yeah, I see the patterns now. And if you don't see patterns, still, there's no big deal. Maybe maybe the way you did it was it works and, and that's fine. That's all that matters. All right, so let's have a look at the instructions. So we're using the OR operator to adjust our path if either of two conditions is true. So it's saying to us 
last logical operator is the or, okay, so that's cool. We take two Boolean conditions and returns true if at least one is true. So if we're on a gem or is blocked left, we would run move forward. So if we were to run test that condition here, well, we're not on a gem, we're not blocked to the left, so we wouldn't move forward. Now, if we were in here, in, inside here, we would try to move forward because we would be blocked to the left. Or if we were in this box here, underneath the gem, we would move forward because is on gem would be true. All right, so it's saying to us, use the OR operator to check whether one of two conditions is true. And it gives us a little hint. You may be blocked either in the front or on the left. Okay, so if either is true, turn right and move forward. Okay, well, let's try writing that out. I mean, that, that we can actually translate into code. And this is a trick that you're going to get better and better at as you practice more and more is translating your thought process when you solve the puzzle into code. So this is almost like writing code, right? So we'll say if either is true, well, either what? Either we're blocked to the front or on the left. So, okay, so let's bring out an if condition here. So if I'm blocked in the front or on the left, so if something's in my way to the front, so if that's is blocked. Now the autocomplete bar is so handy because it's given me the and, the or the and operator and the or operator. So let me tap on the or operator. So I may be blocked either in front or on the left. So is blocked left means there's something to my left that's going to prevent me from moving that way. So I'll hit is blocked left. So those are the two conditions that we're testing. And then, so if either is true, we want to turn right and move forward. Well, where would we put our, our code then? So the code that we want to run, if either of these is true, we want to run, we want to put in here in this block where the code is highlighted blue. So we want to turn right. So we'll scroll over to the right here. We'll tap turn right and then we'll move forward. So we'll scroll over again and move forward. Okay, cool. So that's, that's taking care of step one and step two. Step three says, if neither is true, move forward. So where do you think we put that? Will we try putting it after the condition? Now, if some of you are screaming no at home, I'm very impressed. If none of you are screaming no at home, no big deal. All right, so let's, let's try this out. So if neither is true, move forward. So we're gonna, if we're blocked to the front and we can't move or we're blocked to the left, we're gonna turn right and move forward. So let's run it. All right, so we're getting ready. Hopper's getting warmed up. Oh, so we're blocked. Oh, cool. We turned right and moved forward. Excellent. We're moving forward. Off we go. This is pretty good so far. Oh, we're blocked to the front, so we turn right and move forward. We're blocked to the left, so we turn right and move forward. Whoops. Oh, do you know what? Maybe that's where our bug is. Excellent. So we got to the end. Oh, we kind of, we bonking a little bit. Okay. Maybe this isn't right because Hopper shouldn't be moving like that, right? Or off the edge. That isn't good. Hmm. Okay. So, and then we're going back to the corner. That's good though. Hmm, okay, so we didn't quite solve our problem. Now, we obviously, we didn't solve it because we need to collect the gem at the very end. So let's see how we're going to fix this because I don't like how Hopper was getting a little dizzy down there. If we look here, it says, if neither is true, move forward. So that's kind of like saying, otherwise, if we're not blocked or blocked left, just move forward. So let's do this. Let's add an else statement. Because we don't care in any other condition. What you know, if we're not, if either of these conditions is not true, 
that means that we're not blocked in the front so there's we can move forward and we're there's nothing to the left of us stopping us from moving so let's add an else statement and put our move forward in there so i'm going to tap on the bottom brace and then drag down so that move forward gets moved inside a block of code and i'm gonna if i try running it it says I need to fill this placeholder. Actually, what I want to do really is just delete that placeholder. So now if I try running my code, there I'm blocked, so I'm turning, not blocked. Now I'm blocked on the left, turning again, up you come. Hopper is blocked on the left, so we turn, blocked in front. Locked on the left again, so we turn. Going to be blocked in the front, so we turn. And then that's it. So we hit the end. That looks much better because now we end up under the gem. So where are we going to put that code for collecting the gem? This goes back to our for loops lesson way, way back in the beginning. Well, I probably don't want to try to collect the gem everywhere along the way because it only happens at the end. And if I want to run code at the very end, after this for loop is done, I would put it after the last brace. So let's collect gem at the very end. Let's hit run my code. And off hopper goes. We go, we're blocked left, we're returning. We're moving forward. Moving forward because we're not blocked left. Now we're blocked left, so we're going to turn right. We're blocked in front. Now we're going to be really blocked to the left again. We're blocked in front. Everything's working perfectly. There, and then we collect a gem at the very end. Okay, not bad. Now, if you didn't see the solution to this puzzle without reading these hints here right off the bat, I wouldn't be too disappointed. This is actually not the most obvious solution. I think personally, I would probably approach it in a in a very crude manner first. I would say, well, I'm actually just going to write up the code where I I move forward and then turn right and then move forward a couple times and maybe use a loop so I don't have to repeat myself too many times. And that would be fine because I'd get to the end and I'd be able to collect the gem. I wouldn't use the logical or operator, but it wouldn't be the end of the world. The way they wrote this code with a loop kind of gave us a good hint that, all right, we should really try to use a loop in this case. And sometimes it's fun to challenge yourself to say, oh, I want to use this technique that I learned about. So it's no, no big shame if you, you didn't figure out that this was the way to solve this puzzle straight off the bat. This is why they have these the, the text up at the top is to sort of explain to you what it is they're trying to get you to practice. In fact, we could probably write this a different way. We could probably say, actually, do you know what? We don't need to have move forward in here. We could have move forward outside because we always want to move forward. It's just that we want to make sure that we turn right when we are either blocked in front or blocked to the left. So we could write code that looks... Something like this, like maybe delete this, get rid of our, get rid of our else statement, get rid of these. Now I made a mess of all this code here. Okay, so we have our, our if statement there. All of a sudden our move is outside the for loop. So I'm going to tap on it and hold and then drag it back into my for loop. We could wrote, write code that looks like this. Would work just as well as the other way of doing it. So either doing it in the loop that they prescribe with our practice of our logical or operator, you know, with a, an else statement if we want, without, if, if we think we're clever enough, or doing it, everything written out step by step, not using any loops, not using any uh, logical or operators. It's, it's not wrong to do it that way. It's just a, a different way of doing it. And they'll tell you 
down at the end, they'll give you a hint about saying, hey, why don't you try using logical or operators? But that's only because that's what we're practicing here. So if we run this code, well, we won't even run this code. We'll, we'll run this code next week. The last thing I want to check, just to make sure that you're, you're still with us on the, the not, just to see that in action too, is to go back to this table of contents here, pick using the not operator. And we're actually going to debug this a little bit on, on Monday. What I want you to do over the weekend is review your solution. And if you came up with the same as ours, awesome. If you didn't, no big deal. In fact, what we're going to do is we're going to reset this page and get rid of our solution. And look, if we look at the hints, it kind of tells us, all right, this is what we need to be thinking about. This is randomized, right? So we have to remember. So we're going to actually debug something on Monday where we had some code written that, that worked in some cases, but didn't in others but was really well thought out and used a couple if statements uh, and, and was pretty sophisticated. So have a, have a try in this playground again, go through using the not operator over the weekend, see if you can come up with a solution. I'd love to see it. If you want to post a picture of it, that would be awesome. If you want to send us your code, that would be cool too. If you send an email to live at the code hub dot IE, um, and then on Monday, we'll pick it up again. We'll, we'll briefly go over logical operators again. We'll play around with our quiz a little bit where we can use logical operators inside our, our quiz when we're getting input from users. Uh, and then we'll move on to our, our next chapter, which is all about while loops. All right, I hope you enjoyed today's session. Uh, I hope the, the presentation was useful. I'll put that up on the, the Code Hub website uh, at some point today, and I'll have a link to it from the videos. Guys, have a good weekend, and we'll see you on Monday.